Monday the 6th of February 2012 and I'm down in a uh, rather white covered Norfolk um, just about to undertake I hope part two of walk free walk 70 today I'm uh, hoping to attempt Brancaster back here to Wells uh, and this is the youth hostel in Wells where I'm currently staying um, very nice it is as well, an old converted church and um, that's appropriate because it's opposite St Nicholas's Church here in Wells so I say hope because um, we've had a lot of snow up here it's almost a year to the day uh, since I was last in Norfolk and I filmed part one Hunstanton to Brancaster uh, and that was freezing cold back then I remember as well so certainly get some different views of Norfolk with me not your typical sunny days uh, now the buses weren't running very well yesterday so I'm just hoping that the coast hopper is going to be able to get me down to Brancaster otherwise this walk's not going to happen I don't think so fingers crossed so luckily for me the old coast hopper was running it's uh, now 11 as you can see there and I'm stood outside Phil's Boozer the ship down at Burnham sorry not Burnham, Brancaster um, walk is about 10 miles so it would normally take about 4 hours but because of the snow underfoot today it could possibly add an hour onto the walk anyway I've got plenty of time as Phil predicted he's building cottages in what was the car park here at the ship so just to continue where I left off last year here at the ship that's where I finished so uh, we we'll, might as well carry on from this point and let's see what the walk holds another shot there of St Mary the Virgin Brancaster information board opposite the church advising us of some parish walks National Trust land down there by uh, Brancaster State as you can see So here we are rejoining the uh, coast path, mile and a quarter to Brancaster Staith and we're now in the National Trust's Brancaster Manor. Typical Norfolk Reed country. The snow is quite soft and wet underfoot so it's going to be pretty uh, slippy and I've forgotten me, uh, well I wasn't anticipating this weather to be honest, but I've forgotten my um, ice grips and I haven't brought me stick either. So uh, very much unprepared for this really. Weathermen have got the weather pretty much spot on. Uh, it's a bit misty, so we won't get some, won't get real great views today. But the good thing is that it's not raining, or any other form of precipitation coming out of the heavens. Plenty of bird song up this way, as you'd imagine. Hopefully, we'll get to see some something unusual. A sign here down on the floor. Obviously, that's not where it should be telling us about the reed cutters of North Norfolk coast. And views of said reeds. And in a the distance there, Sculp Head. Marked on the map. There is an option to walk out that way at low tide. Certainly not one I'm gonna to risk today. A, because I don't know what the low tide is, and B, because of the weather underfoot. Wouldn't want to get lost out there today. Just out of interest, um, I was talking to someone in the hostel last night, 
and snow buntings have been spotted up this way. So very appropriate conditions for them, winter visitors to our shores. Clear evidence uh, here of reed cutting in action. Lovely and tranquil down here today. Obviously uh, no one else around at the moment apart from myself and the birds. Brilliant. And then having said that there's a police siren and a pheasant. I'm actually walking on top of a boardwalk here, believe it or not, uh, across the marsh. So uh, it's not doing much good at the minute, being snow covered. Just passing on my right, the National Trust's Brandenham Roman Fort, which is marked on the OS map. information board there telling us about uh, the former fort no evidence of such now though here you get a much better view of uh, the boardwalk basically you wouldn't better do this walk along this section if it wasn't for that it'd be horribly uh, wet underfoot if you attempted it. Now as you can see in the distance there actually got some sunshine coming out. Beautiful. Now an opportunity to view inland on my right as the sun shines down. Delightful. A lovely day it is now. About two degrees at the moment. So uh, camera just about operates at this temperature. Get below zero and I'll be struggling. So that's a little vista, 360 degree vista. Just on the fringes of Brancaster Stave, and now the sun shines out, it's an absolutely delightful day. Once again, I've been blessed with the weather. So here we are at Brancas Estate, and as you can see there, uh, deviation to the left to follow the coast path. Really is absolutely glorious now. So we go down by the side of that house. We find this scene, tide is clearly out. So I uh, could have perhaps done the sculpt head if I'd been really adventurous. But uh, with the weather the way it is, mud underfoot etc, just not worth the risk. Nice summer's day maybe. As you can see there, we've now got four and a quarter miles to burn them over his stave. Information board here provided by the National Trust about Brancaster Stave Key. For those of you interested, you can uh, hopefully enlarge this on your computers, etc. But essentially, uh, associated with barley, beer, and Brancaster Malt House, and later coal, fish, and grain. My goodness, I can't believe how lucky I am with the weather today. Could branch off here at uh, 12 o'clock it is, to Jolly Sailors, or the White Horse Inn, got a number of options here. A little bit uh, industrial, reflecting a local industry. Careful here as the coast path is through this little alleyway. Not the obvious route, although I'm sure you wouldn't uh, go too far astray. 
which is down there. And on the other side, we come out to this marshland. Absolutely delightful in the snow. Some kind of uh, lapwing there, I guess. Certainly a member of the plover family. Get that identified by those guys tonight. Something else I've disturbed there. Red shank, perhaps. Interesting bit of information on this uh, garden. white horse providing uh, a very nice early morning well early lunchtime stop very interesting bird that got no idea what that is is its form of red wing Now that is something that stumps me. Can't get any closer unfortunately for fear of disturbing it. And I'm at maximum range. Anyway. Certainly looks like a thrush blackbird family member. I'm sure the old boys will know how to identify that one. Gone. Okay, just past the fringes of Burnham Deepdale and now about to walk around the edge of Deepdale Marsh which uh, was an absolute cacophony of birdsong last time I was down this way which coincided, funnily enough, with the release of Norfolk Coast by the Stranglers, Valley of the Birds, inspired by the bird song down here, no doubt, albeit that there aren't any valleys around. Glorious. Skulk head out there again, in the distance. In the background you may be able to hear the sound of running water where the uh, big th thaw is happening I believe. Just a reminder of how powerful Mother Nature is. Pretty luckily the uh, sun has melted most of the snow on this seawall so it's making walking a bit easier. Might be able to catch some time up now because uh, as I forecast I am a bit in arrears. Snow's banked up there. Fantastic. Some lovely uh, patterns. The way the reeds are holding that snow up. Because that's what's underneath it. Reed bed. Certainly get a different angle on um, the scenery coming down here in the middle of winter. Egret over there, amongst a few other waders.
landward views of Deepdale Marsh. And a windmill over there in the distance. Sun's starting to disappear, so uh, temperature's dropping. Well, it certainly feels that way. Look at the way that's reflecting on that ice. Really is fantastic this uh, winter wonderland. Patterns in the snow down there, next to that channel. Lapwings everywhere, as you can hear. They seem to be the predominant bird at the moment. For those geese out there, it must be like being back home on the Arctic tundra. Wind's beginning to pick up now, as you can probably hear. Now that windmill I saw over there on the left is actually twixt Burnham Norton and Burnham Market. Pink leg geese, I believe. Difficult to tell them with the Brent, I believe it is. They've got similar features. Anyway, that windmill is uh, twixt Burnham Norton and Burnham Overy Stave. Little error I made a minute ago. So having moved away from Deepdale Marsh, we're now looking across Norton Marsh. I'm right in the corner on the map where another footpath goes across the marsh there. Really is uh, peaceful out here at the moment. Just me and birds. No other disturbance. Delightful. As you can hear, that wing. Different kind of goose here. Don't know if it's grey lag. Could be guessing there just by its colour. But there's absolutely hundreds of them in this field. Funny how they separate from the others. The uh, pink footed. Interesting sound. Burnham Deepdale East Sluice, nicely iced over. And once again, disturbance by the fire brigade this time in the distance. Pretty sure I just felt a spot of rain. I do hope not. Certainly grey enough. We've got a couple of options here. The official route is at an angle, clearly marked there, that white line of snow towards the windmill. Um, that's the coast path, but I'm not going to take that because I've noticed that uh, drivers around here haven't got much consideration for walkers and like 
to splash us in mud. So I'm steering clear of the road and I'm going to do a left as marked on the map and follow that footpath over there which again is marked by the white snow line not the one down here towards the marsh because that doesn't provide access to the village so per radio ad astra close up of the old windmill and in fact I have taken the uh, diagonal up to the road because if memory serves me well I can walk inside this hedge I'll have to find out in a minute yes as you can see this path looks uh, so this marker looks quite new certainly wasn't the case when I last did this walk and you can now walk along the inside of the hedge which makes sense getting misty now as the weathermen forecast so that brings us out very nicely onto a footpath and lo and behold another week another death not sure what that is it's like a possibly a fox to me judging by those ears it's certainly not a cat Anyway, frozen nicely, doesn't smell. Must have happened in the last couple of days. Okay, it's half past one, and I've just hit uh, Burnham Overy Stathe. I'm going to stop here for lunch at this seat donated by a name I couldn't clearly read. I think it was Mary Stoiler and it's a happy 90th birthday apparently anyway just have to pick the moment when a, a jet from Marham no less has flown over our head but this is the view I think the worst place is to have lunch accompaniment of uh, ducks over there giant snipe has just arrived by the looks of him no nope. that's a wimbrill I think Just sitting here finishing off my lunch and one of these turns up. Still not sure what it is. Very large. As I say, Wimbrill comes to mind, but uh, I thought they were small. Another egret over there. <coughs> Along with these noisy gulls. In fact, the noisy gulls, uh, as I thought, may not be gulls at all, but uh, full mar. I'm sure that's what the um, Twitchers were telling me last night they'd seen some full miles around and as these are quite small and not particularly like gulls although clearly of the same family they could well well be full miles another one to check out there's one of them they've got pink feet seem to like uh, paddling in the water against the tide yep not a gull I'd say that's a full mile a 
okay just leaving Burnham over his stathe and um, prior to this sign I saw one back there at the beginning of the village saying six and three quarter miles to Wells so clearly this is going to be a lot longer than 10 miles as indicated in the uh, walking instructions I believe I read in the official guidebook that this walk is at least 12 or 13 so uh, I better get my skates on seeing as it's already around 2 o'clock looks like the environment agency have been busy at work here repairing the um, sea wall which is very popular with walkers so clearly was worn down and deteriorated looking back at Burnham classic Norfolk coastal scene isn't it less vegetation around this side uh, as opposed to the Norton side more sand dunes or more sand banks dunes out at the coast there Sea defences of times gone past, making use of local materials. Views landward. And looking over there towards the Holcomb estate, and Gun Hill on my left. Further views back across the marsh towards Burnham over his stathe. This part of the marsh is a lot drier, more vegetation. <laughs> I'm at a point not far from Gun Hill. Which is over that way. Strange colours there in the uh, mud flats, in the waters. Really is getting bitter now the sun has gone in. Just about to uh, hit the sand dunes ahead of me. Environment Agency have done a brilliant job on this path. Much better than it used to be. More board walking as we enter the dunes. And one last look on my left. At the mud flats back towards the Burnhams. Snow, mist and sand dunes. What a combination. Onward path is ahead. And although this is called the Norfolk Coast Path, this is actually my first view proper of the sea today. Which as you can see from this vast, delightful expanse of sand, is a long way out. solitary oyster catcher over there where's he gone? no, it lost him there Excuse her wobbling, my hands are frozen. Amazingly uh, eerie. Sand, snow and dunes. Not quite the usual combination is it? But uh, amazingly peaceful. Now I'm in the middle of nowhere. Yet there's creatures here birds, animal prints as well. So that's uh, interesting. I wonder what animal possibly wanders around here in the evening. Foxes? God knows. Last time I walked this section through to Hokum, 
it was full of male naturists bobbing up and down in the uh, sedge. I don't think I'll be seeing too many today. Not snow shovels, implements much needed down this stretch at another time of year. Fire beaters. I think all those little footprints I've been seeing are rabbits. Come to think of it. So there you have it. And as I've commented before, why is it always men that you see in these places? There's the famous Holcomb Sands, seen in a different perspective. Not being a local up here, I'm not sure how often the snow lies on the sand like this, but uh, wouldn't have thought it's that many times. But that's something else. Yeah. And the sea out there in the distance. about make it out through the gloom. Mm-hmm. Information board here about Hokum Beach. Amazing. Just seems such a far cry from donkeys and crowds in here down here in August and July. And it's an absolutely cracking beach. Gets very busy though, as you'd imagine. Now I might veer from the beach, which is quite tough walking because it's snow on sand, and go through a wooded stretch. Let's have a look. Yeah, just for a bit of variety, this makes a nice alternative route. So as you can see, just under three miles to go. One last view of Hokum. Delightful bay it is. No wonder the Queen comes down here and walks her corgis from time to time, so I read. Absolutely delightful on a day like today, no crowds about. Interesting smell down here of snow on salt, or something like that anyway. Further information about Hokum, which hopefully you can uh, magnify and read. You will see there, in the top corner, the marsh area. And I've just seen one of those. Unfortunately I couldn't get it on camera because it disappeared by the time I was able to get it in shot. But yep, lovely big marsh area just seen. So this plethora of uh, markers, we now turn left, away from the beach and head back to Wells on the landward side of this wood. A walk I've done before with Phil and company. Remember the last time I did this lane walk, all these birches had that um, disease that was going around a few years ago. And here's a consequence, none of them left. There's a nice new seat in position now I notice. Pretty easy walking into wells now down this lane. It's getting a bit firmer underfoot which shows the temperature's dropping. 
Yeah, another information board about the National Nature Reserve at Hokum. And over there you've got the um, activity centre next to Wells Woods, which I've just walked through and seen a marsh tit. Well, there you go, for the local women. First Tuesday of each month at 10 a.m. Meet here at the Beach Caf, which is currently closed. The other light was actually open. Now these vessels here, all modern and high tech, are associated with the wind farm out at uh, Sheringham. Disaster, absolute disaster, Chris Hume. Get rid of it. R4, and there's the uh, sleepy town of Wells next sea in the distance there. It's just starting to drizzle, so I've got back just in time. And if it's drizzling, the temperature must be rising. Could be a muddy old walk to Clyde tomorrow. Here we are, 20 to 5, and back in Wells Harbour. Uh, so that's part two, Brancaster to Wells next sea, completed. Uh, 13 and a half miles I recorded, which is certainly more than a 10 written in the text. Now allowing for uh, other variables, probably 12 is the right distance. So uh, yeah, certainly feels like I've done about 15 because of the snow and sand combination, very tough on the legs. Anyway, very pleasant walk. Do part three tomorrow. Wells next to sea to Cly. And I've only got 24 minutes left on this card. Amazingly, I've managed to find 40 minutes to record today. So this becomes my longest video. On a cold, snowy February day, that's quite unbelievable. <laughs>